we're all out in the yard this time of year trying to improve the look and functionality of our of our property. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about retaining walls, um, proper installation, and when we would be uh, when you might use a retaining wall. Um, two different scenarios where you might use one. One where you've got a really steep drop in grade, where there's really just no way to transition that grade so that it's easy to use and uh, maintain. Uh, we'll show you a little bit more about that here in a second. The other area where you might want to use a retaining wall is if you want to artificially make your property more uh, level. So let's say you want to put in a pool or you need a place to play bocce ball. Um, you know, we can install a retaining wall to create an otherwise, what otherwise would be a steep pitch to your yard. Uh, and in this case, we can actually fill it in, use a retaining wall to hold back that area and uh, make it for more usable space. So let's take a look at a couple of those scenarios. Let's look at, um, you know, when is a good time to install one and also some of the good quality uh, installation techniques. So you can see in a lawn like this where it's steep, it's just not very usable. Uh, you can see where the lawnmowers uh, actually scalped the yard because of the steep drop. And also it becomes a safety issue both for walking and for cutting and maintaining. It just, uh, it's not a good scenario. So what do we do to take away the steep drop in grade? Let's take a look here as an actual installed retaining wall. There are really two major quality considerations when installing a retaining wall. One, make sure that it's buried deep enough that you're below the frost depth. So in the winter, you don't want, when the ground freezes, that, that wall to heave and it's going to crack and crumble on you. The other thing is we want to make sure there's plenty of drainage back behind the wall so that there's not additional pressure on that wall other than the material that it's holding back. So the first component of that drainage for the back side of the wall is going to be the drain tile, which will be... Uh, positioned at the base of the wall. That drain tile is going to collect any water that gets behind the wall and it's going to release it out from behind the wall so we don't get any additional hydrostatic pressure and force on that wall. So let's take a look at this retaining wall being installed in the field. You can see the drain tile behind it and then the other component to the drainage system is this uh, creating a drainage plane on the back side of the wall. We don't want water trapped up against it, creating uh, additional forces, hydrostatic forces. So we've got this dimpled fabric. It's a plastic material, and then it's got a filter fabric on top of it. Goes up against the wall, creates air pockets, and any water that is trapped up against the wall makes its way to these pockets and then down to the drain tile and then out from behind it. It works great. An alternate material you could use back behind the wall would just be a gravel or stone. Here's an example of a retaining wall being used to hold back the soil at an electrical transformer. Here's an example of a retaining wall before backfill. It's curved as you can see and then here you go after backfill. So a retaining wall can be a great way to make your yard more usable. Um, there's only three things to remember when, when designing your retaining wall installation. First, make sure that it's strong enough for the application that you're using it for. Two, make sure that uh, you've got drainage behind it that'll allow the water to escape so you don't have any additional hydrostatic pressure back there. And three, just make sure that it's buried deep enough so that you don't have any frost heave issues in the winter.